Okay, welcome. This is Jenkins User Experience Meeting. Today is December the 7th. And attending is Tim Jacomb. We have Jake Leon with us. We have Christina with us. And we have myself, Alexander Brandes. Okay. First item on the agenda. First item on the agenda are security reviews for UX pull requests by Tim. Mm, I don't know. I haven't really been following too closely. Um, WADAC was supposed to review um, if they were going to continue the process. Um, I think the main ones got unblocked. Um, yeah, he added a comment to last week's meeting that the security team meets every Friday and makes sure that they don't miss anything we ping them for. Okay. Yeah, there's there's only two sitting with needs security review currently. Uh, and one closed, which I'll remove it from. Um, And yeah, the two that are sitting there aren't really not active or um, likely to move forward anytime soon, I don't think. Yeah, I think the item from last meeting from last meeting was likely just for the TPJ SPR. It was on hold for a very long time, but since it was a lot, it was more than that. There was a whole bunch of them. It was, um, I think. I there was maybe three or four that were been stuck for a while, and there was probably ten to fifteen sitting there. Um, so it looks like if they've it looks like they've sorted it out now, it's, a little, it's in a much better state. Yeah, that sounds good. And uh, it was last week's meeting. The next topic uh, are user feature flags status report from Vadek. I think there didn't happen a lot from last meeting. At least the PR is almost in the same state since then. Mm. Yeah, just taking a look at the Feature flag PR from Vardek, there wasn't much progress from last meeting. And just a few general things we will need to talk about. But yeah, things didn't change much since then. The next point uh, are web components in Jenkins UX from Torsten, but he isn't here today. So yeah, I don't think we can add a lot to that. He submitted a PR to Jenkins. But there happened, they didn't happen much a lot with the PR. Currently, the build is failing, and there is no uh, there is no proof of concept or something that we could take a look at right now. Just on the PR itself, he basically added everything he was talking about in last meeting. But that's basically it, I think. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't we didn't take a close look at the PR yet, based on the comments. Mm, the next part is the Yahoo UI removal from Jan and Tim, first delivered in last in last week's weekly release. Yeah, and we have apparently a draft PR for that. That it's. That is a follow up that adds more SIC. Yeah, it gets rid of the Yahoo UI um, menus. Yeah, I see for like uh, drop down menus and so on, but that is still a draft. There's a lot of test failing, is the reason it's in draft. Um, like I think yeah, quite a few. Fun fun functionally, I think it works, but. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, adding to the Yahoo UI removal, I think that was this week's release, yesterday's release, where we fixed, uh, at least Jan fixed a uh, civil regression from the initial PR that caused load that caused a uh, regression with loading pages taking at least 10 or more seconds caused by the um tpj spr but this is, this has been fixed by now so we can move on from there on uh ux improvements <clears throat> by jan and tim mm, i haven't had time really to work on anything um my limited time right now is stuck on Dependabot PRs. <laughs> yeah, we have quite a few of them. Yeah, it's taking a lot of, taking a lot of time. True. Mm. Do we have anything outside of the agenda? This is basically- Yeah, this... I have a, a quick addition um, around accessibility. I don't know if the UX special interest group is the appropriate place for that, or if you have a separate accessibility yeah. um so Risha, i'm i don't remember which client provided it but we had a list of of um, accessibility issues um for wcag aa compliance and she wasn't sure of the status so i went through and she directed me to use kind of the ci.jenkins.io since that was presumably i think the baseline um for for what's recent um, Outlook wasn't great. <laughs> there were a lot of issues. How, what's the best way to kind of get that, those issues back into the community? Or is there a effort ongoing? Um, kind of the major ones, the ones that I see as kind of the most, um, the biggest roadblocks to someone who would be trying to navigate with accessibility issues is, you know the new the new um, breadcrumb menu. How there's those little, you know, sub drop downs between each layer. Yeah. Yeah. So if you were to navigate <clears throat> the keyboard, keyboard down into select one of those, you know, um, I don't know what you want to call them, the menus within each breadcrumb layer. If you navigate down. I keyboard through them, I keyboard to the last input where I would typically expect that, you know, I keep tabbing, it would close that menu and bring me up to the next item in the tab order, the breadcrumb bar. Currently it spits you out in page. There's a few issues like that of like the, the tab order being maintained on, on keyboard navigation. What's the best way to get that feedback? Um, uh, Jira issues really someone someone to review the document and um, I think there should be some labels for it because it's there's been a number of these audits before yeah uh, I'm just trying to see the problem is... I think in two on there's always this um, impulse to just use kind of the browser extensions or automated tools for the accessibility checks and they don't find um, a lot of the major navigational issues. You know, they're good for identifying like that all of your alt tags are there, that the color contrast is okay, but they kind of, those tools fall apart when it comes to auditing like the keyboard navigation, which is kind of one of the more important pieces of, of a site being accessible that someone can navigate through it. <laughs> so I don't know how best to it really needs someone to just review it and raise yeah. the issues labeled, labeled appropriately, May, maybe yeah. even adding it to the UX dashboard. Um, then the, so there's the, well, maybe a new dashboard for it that shows them. The ones I've got favorited are UX regressions and UX newbie friendly, which some of these might show up on there, but, um, I'm um, just saying, maybe is there access? I don't know. Jer so, from Jira barely loads for me, so I can't. I can't really contribute much in um, anything to do with Jira, which has not been helping for me. Um, just does does not load. Um, we don't have to solve it today, but it's just something to think about. Kind of the best way to. 
both. So I think the, so there's an accessibility label and labels equals. Yeah, I think we have the UX regression over time dashboard and we have the open UX regressions, which are untried. If we have no real dashboard or um, epic to track actual feedback on what we do, unless I'm not following the dashboard. Is there a link uh, to the dashboard? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the dashboard's probably, I mean, there's probably, if we don't have a oh. UX overall dashboard, this is just a like a kind of, that's a bug dashboard, which I mean, the accessibility might fit into, but I probably want to label it separately as well. Okay. Um, so I've, I've sent a link and a couple of links in the chat. So the first one, um, should show up things with um, the accessibility label on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it, does show, it shows open ones, it's closed ones as well. Let me fix that. And resolution is... Is there any kind of um, prioritization? Doesn't look like. So I've, just, I've just changed it to only show open ones. There's oh. only 12 okay. that are open at the moment. Because there's definitely some areas of low hanging fruit that if they were addressed, it would go a long ways towards so much about accessibility compliance too is demonstrating good faith that like they are being dealt with and triaged and and, and worked yeah. on. So there's in, in it's core it's itself, there's, stuff, like that would be. Yeah, in core itself, there's only nine that are open. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that would be the way. Okay. Um, and then possibly another um well I can another, add... maybe another area on the on a dashboard or something just so people see them um can anyone add here yeah yeah anyone can anyone can report the issues okay. um okay i'll add some at least like preliminary some of the big pieces start there yeah, they're quite good in things like um, Hacktoberfest and that sort of things, or in hack things, because they're general, a lot of them can be fairly straightforward to fix quite quickly. That's it. Like a lot of it is just. It's, yeah, it's kind of like that where you feel like the the la the the, um, the absence of like just like a QA test plan <laughs> or something, just to make sure that they're. Uh, the testing has been done before it's committed, but figure that out. Yeah, I see Oleg raised a few a while ago. They're, they're, they're not very actionable because they don't have um, they don't have specifics in them. So if I just could just show you a couple of examples of not very good bug reports. Um, um, just sending links. Yeah, so these are a couple that aren't very good because they say it has some spacer images. It doesn't say where they are. Um, yeah, this one says, I found this that one, one when I was going this through one, it and I yeah, was like, I this can't one, find what this is. This one says, this yeah. is, there is an order report saying it's hard to navigate with a keyboard where it's not actionable, um, yeah. which is probably why it's over. I would, I would probably close either close that as won't fix or repurpose it. Um, yeah, I mean, so. this is the core of what I would probably, yeah, no, I agree that these are poor. I would probably add it with kind of some, I'd also add some, there's not, how to word it nicely, there's not always a great understanding about what exactly this, the requirements are for each level of accessibility compliance. Um, so I think it would probably be helpful if in the bug report I include some kind of where it's happening and what it would look like, examples of what it would look like resolved. Um, this thing's like even you know the build queue in the bottom left sidebar. If you have 80 items there, you have to keyboard. There's just traps everywhere. Like you have to tab through to get to your content, you would have to tab through all 80 of the items in that build queue before your cursor took you to the main content of the, you know, the main content area. So it's just in like adding some bypass, some hidden um, bypass 
I, I just tried and you, you can't actually do it. You you can't navigate through the build executor status to the main area because no, it's, 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 constant, it's constantly refreshing. So it's yeah. not actually possible to tab through it unless it's, unless it's basically empty. Yeah, so what you'd probably what you'd want to do in that case is under the build queue header um, with the hidden area tags, put a jump to main content area that's only available on keyboard yeah, yeah. navigation and just let people bypass those areas. Similarly, when you first start tabbing the page, keep them from having to go through that whole top area, do like a skip to navigate, skip to content area. Um, you, but I'll make some tickets and just include some examples um, that may be helpful. And then I assume people can post questions and comments in in the thread. Do yeah. they do they tag the original um, bug poster? Um, they will. Although you should, I think when you create them, you should get automatically subscribed. Okay, cool. All right, we'll start there, and then we can revisit how that process works and revise it as needed yeah fix the navigate fixing the keyboard navigation um like all of the mm -hmm. like there's a hierarchy of what's most important as far as accessibility goes and and the, the nav keyboard navigation part is one of the biggest like alt tags on spacers things like that those are nice to have but if you don't have the kind of the underpinnings of the navigation resolved, then it's kind of, you know, not worth the effort to fix fix that when the other, the, the bigger piece is broken. So, cool. Yeah, that sounds good so far. I think mm -hmm. we have overall a very high amount of UX related issues, but there are also a, a little, there's also a pretty high amount of issues like these which are basically mm -hmm. not filled properly and don't allow any try or anything further to investigate I'll, because I'll there's just not on my new issues that I owe if I as when I create the new issues can I link to related issues to like capture all of these little orphan tickets that are kind of half baked so that when the proper ticket for keyboard navigation is done then these will be closed i would probably just close okay those ones can anyone close them yeah anyone can okay close them. okay so i'll i'll make a note in the description that the creation of that ticket closed whatever and whatever whatever yeah just just say say replaced with yeah the, this one yeah, yeah we should so probably should probably go through all these old issues and probably close them all if they no longer actually affect anything given so much changed from basically 2020 to now <laughs> yeah so yeah. i don't think that, that these epics or these issues are much of use anymore unless they actually refer, oh, to, some, refer to something that is still in use well should like, i just revise that epic like keep uh, that epic and I just I just discovered this epic. I didn't know about that before, but yeah, like, I, I intentionally didn't link the epic. <laughs> quickly, quickly reading over it, we don't we don't no longer have any green balls or red balls or anything like that. So, yeah, this is is well, not up to date. Leave the epic, and I'll edit it. Maybe no, I guess. But personally, I would just create new issues, and then okay. if if you've got time, close these issues as well. Okay. Um, but I would focus on new actionable issues. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Priority minor. Oh no. Okay. Okay. That's all I've got on that. Yeah. Thanks. Does anyone else have anything to add to the agenda? No? No. Okay. This is basically the same agenda from last week from Mark's meeting because I don't have to add anything either. So I think that that, that it's today. Okay. Okay. Yep. Good to see you.
I'll see you before the end of it. Bye. Then I will stop the recording.